Hello and welcome back to Smash or Trash Independent Filmmaking, March 2024. I'm Robert Long, who runs the website, as well as these videos that are being put on here. So, it's been a while since anything has been uh, put together for you kind folks. Uh, before I get started, I want to say that um, I am really getting back to th into the thick of things. There's going to be a lot more reviews and interviews. This one's a how-to, uh, so these are going to be going up. And um, uh, so I've also got a GoFundMe, which should be listed below in the links, uh, going on uh, to become executive producers. If you if you donate something towards me to uh, help keep things running along, and uh, you get an executive producer for all the rest of 2024 uh, for helping me out on the website as well as uh, th these videos. But enough about that. Uh, I've got a new set background for Smash Your Trash and I'm uh, really happy with how it turned out. And um, the inspiration is from movies that we've all seen and all loved, probably from sci-fi movies such as Star Wars and Alien and to a lesser extent uh, the TV show Mystery Science Theater 3000. It's got that mechanical, complicated, geometric look to it, which I love. Um, so I had actually, this was three panels at one time. I've condensed it down into one, um, and it's here in my living room. It sits above my couch. And uh, it, it still needs some work done to it, but we'll talk about that. But I'm going to tell you about how you can do something like this for your movies. And it's really not as bad, it's really not as complicated as you might think it is. So, the first thing I started off with is I needed big pieces of cardboard uh, to lay this out on. So, what I did is where I work we get uh, we get fixtures in very large boxes so I was able to cut them down uh, take them in my car and bring them home here now this is about two uh, pieces of cardboard or three thick and the biggest things you're going to need besides a cutting knife uh, your biggest friends are going to be a drill as well as a hot glue gun. What I did was I started out with, um, this is probably a three, three by six, three by seven piece of cardboard when all said and done. And uh, I, it, what it is is it's three pieces of the cardboard basically hot glued together. So it's got some stability. Um, what I did after that is there's a technique that was brought about uh, back way back in the 76 77 when they were doing uh, Star Wars where people would collect uh, what would be known as nernies or greebies uh, however you want to pronounce them but it's basically odd modeling parts odd pieces of plastic that could be all super glued together to create interesting things like the spaceships or the uh, the Death Star Trench so I have been collecting for a very long time. I've got about three boxes of caps and and containers uh, and different little bottles that I'm able to cut apart and re-glue together in a configuration that looks nice and complicated. And so, I mean, here, here's a sample. You know, I mean, I've got just in this right here, I've got just a few different plastic pieces. It's just what you can save up, you know, if you're living with somebody, try to keep it neat so they're not, uh, you know, you're not driving them crazy by having this stuff all over the place. But yeah, you can start putting together interesting little uh, sidebar uh, control panels and stuff. This right here, uh, I mean, this is all stuff that I've just found over the last few years. This is a handle, this is uh, part of a pin, and this is a uh, pill bottle. And what it's going to become is a lever. 
once I built that into an actual piece of the prop. Once I got the cardboard laid down, I had to start getting the greebies laid out. They're nerdies. Because before I paint anything, uh, it, this is all going to be glued down. What I started to do is I started to lay out some of the different pieces that I had collected all this time until I got something that I really liked. I mean, this right here, the what looks like vents and pieces of machinery, these are uh, cookie boxes from this uh, the supermarket, just plastic cookie boxes, and uh, these are uh, these are Easter chocolate crosses. <laughs> Um, uh, you know, paint can tops. Uh, we've got uh, some uh, laundry detergent tops. I mean, it's just what uh, right behind me here is a squirt gun. So it all comes down to making it look interesting and, and uh, maybe starting to develop some patterns. So that all started being glued, hot glued down, which works pretty well. Uh, but you do have to make sure that it's pressed down tight and uh, it, it, it sets. As it is, this has been moved many times. I have to do it myself. Uh, so it does get knocked around a little bit. It could probably use a little bit of repair uh, at this moment. So that just means getting back in with some hot glue. Anyways, so once I hot glued down most everything that I wanted in a in the way that I, I needed it to be. Uh, then I went to Walmart and I picked up really cheap gray paint. Uh, I think it was like ten or eleven dollars for a can of it. So uh, and back then I was actually doing much more sets. This is only one panel. I was doing three or four. Uh, so that was a pretty good investment because it comes off lighter on camera than than it is that's one thing that you have to keep in mind is that when you start going light gray it can start looking almost white once you get lights and stuff on it so uh but i basically gave everything one or two coats of uh this this light gray just to make it all uniform just to make it look like it started to gel together like it was all part of one thing and um, so after that was done uh, I started going okay well we've got to have some color on here so I use translucent or transparent colored plastics that I've saved uh, you know and hopefully you can put some lights or something behind them speaking of lights well I feel that this needs a lot more than what's on here, but this is a start. This is only one set of Christmas lights uh, that I cheaply got off of Amazon or I got at Walmart or something. And between you and me, yeah, I want them blinking. I think the blinking bulb is actually on the back of this panel, so I have to take this off, put the blinking bulb in so it, it can start going. But as you can see, it could use at least three times what you're seeing here, but this is a good start. And what it, what's done is, again, very carefully, I basically found out how much space was in between each light on the string. And I started looking it over, and with a drill, I started drilling in uh, spots at even intervals where I was going to put the light in. Once that was done, I used the hot glue gun on the back and just carefully kind of glued the lights on the back of this in place so they wouldn't fall out. Uh, and I also had to make sure of which way the plug was going to be uh, facing because it's got to it's got to get to an outlet. So uh, it, the outlet is on this side plugged into uh, an extension cord and into the wall. So we got some lights in there. We got some beautiful colored lights in there. Something else that needed to be thought of is that if I if this is going to be used for a mad laboratory or if this is going to be used for the site of a spaceship cockpit or something, 
you want some screens going on. So I've got two or three places here where I have painted uh, areas to be kind of like green screen green. Now, truth be told, um, it's a little uneven, so I'm going to go back over it one of these days soon to, uh, to repaint something a little bit more even on all of those surfaces so that it, sh it keys out better and I can get actual screen screens back there. Once that was done, you know, it's almost, it's all coming together pretty quickly. Um, how I had to put this, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm doing this alone, so how I had to get this up on the wall is I had to get a card table out and basically lean this up on, on the edge of the card table so that I could push it back and, and get the screwdriver tip of the, um, the, uh, the drill to basically screw it in two or three places into the wall at the top and a couple places at the bottom because I didn't want to, I didn't want to deal with nailing. I mean, I want something that's going to be somewhat easy to take down if I need it to be. And uh, so, you know, I could just do that. And, you know, once I got that up and I got the uh, thing plugged in in there, and uh, now I've got a mad scientist background that I can use for these videos. Or I will let my friends in the area, my local uh, filmmakers, uh, come by and use it if they want to. Now, something that uh, has to be said is nothing on here is a working piece of a prop. In other words, it's all for looks. None of the button, there's no buttons that work. There's nothing gets pushed in. Nothing can be turned on. Uh, so that has to be uh, kept in mind that if you want to do something like that, you're going to have to think ahead. Uh, I had done a lot of thought on this, but it's not like I had a diagram. I just went about using pieces from uh, CD cases and, and different, uh, basically different moldings and, and buttons and, and bottle caps and came up with this, which I'm pretty happy with. Now, over time, it's going to change. I'm going to add more to it. I'm going to probably reinforce it, make it look better, maybe do some repainting to make it look a little neater. One thing about TV and movies is that it looks great on screen. It doesn't look as good close up. And I know this from working on movies. Uh, but with high definition these days, you want to make it look as good as you can. So this is what's going on with the set. That's how you do something like that. You save up scraps of plastic and, and interesting shapes. Uh, you have a hot glue gun. Uh, you get some gray paint. Uh, you get a you get a drill, and basically you start laying it out to something that looks neat and repetitive to you and complicated, and you can start getting that Star Wars or that Aliens look, and obviously Mystery Science Theater 3000, where they used toilet seats and old toys. For the backgrounds of their walls. Anyways, I hope that this has inspired you some. I really hope to do a lot more. Uh, I'm not going to make a promise of one of these a week, but I would, I would love to start getting some uh, steam going on this again, and and start getting the reviews and and interviews and how tos like this back up. So thank you for checking in. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you are a filmmaker or if you're just somebody who likes to learn about this interesting sci-fi and horror stuff that uh, I've been working on for decades uh, I hope to see you again and be sure to check in on Smash or Trash and if you're interested please help me with the GoFundMe you become an executive director for the rest of the year thank you very much